you should ever coach in this business are people that are in your own group, your own downline. The only people you should ever have coaching from is your own upline. Because those are the only people that have a financial interest in your success. And nobody else really is adequately prepared to coach you. They can't see your numbers online because they're not in your downline. You can't see their numbers, right? Okay? And uh, you shouldn't give them access really to your 120-day Ruby plan journal, which I think you should fill out every 120 days. Every one of you should have one. I do. I make notes in it every time I go to meetings, every time I'm someplace. Thoughts come to me, people I'm talking to, people I need to follow up with. My daily calendar is in there. Okay? Keep a history. Keep all those volumes over the years. Refer back to them. You'll learn a lot. You'll go back and get names that you forgot about. You can recruit them five years from now. True. All right? So it's good to keep records like that. And so what you need to do is when you want to respect or, or make sure you don't do any cross-lining, is that you don't go out there and ask somebody else how much they're making. Okay, that's a no-no. How much are you making? Does it really matter? We've already proven the comp plan works. We've already got tons of people that are millionaire circle, five million circle, 10 million circle, 20 million circle. It's beyond doubt that it works. That's already been decided. It is not appropriate for you to go out there and tell people what you make. Because you could de-edify and you could not respect the cross line by saying what you make and totally discourage somebody else or make them think they're not moving fast enough or they're not doing the business in the proper way. If a downline comes to you and they think you're a leader and they say, you know, Tom, you know, tell me, tell me what you think about this. Here's what my plan says, but I'm not sure. You know, what are, you, what are your secrets? Give me your secrets. Well, man, your ego just might go crazy. I'm like, I'm going to give my secrets. I got some great stuff, you know. Your secrets might be off the reservation. Okay, they, they're not part of the system. They're your own ideas, maybe. And I've watched this happen over the years. I've watched people that think they don't need to be in these meetings, and they sit out in the hall. They sit and talk amongst each other, and there are a bunch of different cross lines, you know, and they're out there commiserating or talking about something. I don't know what they're doing, but they're not being productive and they're not in the meeting. Those are the ones that never, ever really succeed because they think they already know everything. They, they can't change, they can't learn, they can't sit in the seat and try to figure out how to move to the next level themselves. And so they sit and talk amongst each other. Tell me what you think of that. What about that? Is this working or is that not working? You know, what do you think? And they start to have all these thoughts that have nothing to do with the system. And they think they got their own ideas. They want to do it. Fine. You want to do that? You're not part of the system. Go up and do your own little idea then, okay? It's not so much important, folks, that everything in the system's the best. It might not be the very best single thing at every point in the system. The key part of the system is that it's a system, that we do one thing. That we don't have everybody out doing their own little offshoots of everything so that nobody can duplicate anything. Right? You confuse duplication, you de-edify the system, you de-edify the cross line, you're not respecting your cross lines by doing those kinds of behaviors, right? I hope I'm making some sense on this point. It's really critical that everybody realizes that teamwork, these four principles of teamwork, that being a team is the most important thing. Because then you can duplicate. If everybody does the same thing, we we'll all work together, then it grows faster, right? If we have people that are upset, and well, I hate Graham, you know. He, Graham looked at me weird one day. I know he hated me, so I hate him. And I'm going to go do my own group, okay? People just get the weirdest ideas, okay? Practice some forgiveness. Practice some humility. Practice some tolerance. And realize that it's better for your damn line to work together with the whole group here than it is for you to peel off because of your ego, because you're offended somehow, and you think you're going to go do it your own way. You're damaging your own growth, your own group, and you're not respecting the other cross lines that are around. Because your ego is going to force a wedge where you're going to try to attract people to come to your meeting instead of this meeting. Okay? Don't do that. Swallow your pride. You know, eat some humble pie, and uh, just be part of the team. Be a team player. That's so critical. Point number four is coaching. Okay, first one was duplication. Second one is edification. Third one is respecting cross line or no cross lining, right? And number four, number four is coaching. What do we mean when we say coaching? Well, what's your job as a leader? Let's back up. What's your job as a distributor? What should you be doing 100% of your time when you're brand new in this business? Recruiting. Your job is to recruit, period. You don't have to manufacture. You don't have to put together marketing plans and stuff like this that we can put in the meeting rooms, 
right? You don't have to ship anything. You don't have to do the legal. You don't have to do the accounting. You don't have to do any of the stuff that most people do in the business. You gotta do one thing. You gotta recruit. You gotta open your mouth and talk to people every day. You're either recruiting frontline or you're driving the line and you're recruiting downline with your people. Four, five, six, seven, eight levels deep even. Right? That's your job. You recruit every day. You just ingrain it in your brain that you're gonna be a recruiter. And you do it for the rest of your life. Okay? Now some people go, man, recruiting is like stressful and people say no, and I really hate it. It's like I get rejected. I don't want to be a recruiter my whole life. Then you better hit the door right now. Because you're not going to make it anyway. Okay? If you want to be successful in this business, you've got to learn to love people. That's the basic thing. You've got to learn to love people. You've got to learn just to get into conversations with people. You don't even need to have the objective to be you're going to recruit them. Just learn to talk to people. If you're an introvert like me, and you have to convert yourself to an extrovert so you can talk to people, then just make eye contact for the first three days. Okay, tomorrow, just start looking at everybody. Make eye contact and smile. Just do that. They might think you're a little strange. Okay? But at least you smile. Then maybe like in four days you go, you smile and you look at him and you go, hi. Hi. Just say hi. Just do that for like four days. Hi. 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 How are you? How are you going? I think that's what you guys say down here, right? Something like that? Okay. That's all you do. And then maybe the next week you add a few more things to it. You know, add a, add a sentence or two to it. So what are you doing here? Where are you going? What have you been? Oh, man, that's a great briefcase. Look at your watch. Why wow, your hair is fantastic. Where'd you get that dress? Whatever. Just learn to talk to people. Take the pressure off. Don't have it in your mind that you're going to recruit every person you talk to. Just learn to be an extrovert. Just learn to love people. Just learn to, I mean, people are the most interesting things. I promise you, if you get good at just talking to people, you'll become the best recruiter. People want to know that you can listen. You can ask a question and listen. Just let them talk. That's all you got to do. People want to talk, you know? Nobody listens to people enough. Let them talk. It won't be five minutes, and they'll open up a door so big you can drive a truck through it. It won't even be five minutes, and they'll go, oh, man, I have no energy in my life anymore. Well, what's wrong with me? Or, you know, I have this problem. I've been to the doctor. Or, you know, I lost my job, or I hate my boss, or I have no time enough vacation. I feel like I don't have any time to go really do what I want. This is my real hobby. I mean, they'll give you an opening so big you can say, you know what? You might be interested in what I do. It's that simple. Okay, now, those are people that aren't even FFBC. They're not even FFBC. They're just people. They're everywhere. Okay? They're all over the place. Learn to get into conversations. Learn to love people. Have fun. And then if the opportunity presents itself, approach them. If it doesn't, who cares? Go talk to the next ones. Have fun. That's all you got to do, right? It's very, very simple to do this business. It's not hard to do at all. If somebody barks at you, that's an immediate, hey, I don't want to work with that person. I mean, here you get to pick who you want to work with. At the companies you work for, you don't get a pick who you want to work with. And there's some real booger eaters in those companies, right? <laughs> you don't have to work with booger eaters anymore. You get a pick who you want to work with. If you say, hey, how's it going? And then you look at something and they go, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, and they're all screwed up and they got a bad look on their face, bad energy, big knot in their forehead. Like that. You don't have enough time to massage all those knots out of all those screwed up people. You're not a shrink. You're not a psychologist, okay? You just move on. You still, I can see you're mostly a dog. You bark. I don't want to work with you. I want to work with people. Then you just go, see you later. Have a nice day. Move on to the next one. And if you say, how's it going? And somebody goes, yeah, I'm having a great day. It's good, yeah. How are you? That's an open person. Get into a conversation. That's somebody who's pleasant. You might want to work with them. Is that easy? Does that take some of the pressure off? Yeah, it's fun to do that, right? So what is coaching? Let me get back to that one. I got derailed there. What time do we have? A couple minutes. We got hurt. Okay. Coaching is your responsibility as a leader. Once you become a Ruby executive, you better really start coaching your people. Until then, you're just kind of recruiting, and you're upline Ruby or Diamond or Blue Diamond is going to help you do the coaching. Okay? What do you coach on? What's your job as a leader when it comes to your downline? You got people that are serious? Don't show it to them. To give them direction and guidance and help, you should have a monthly meeting with them. Like a monthly personal interview. 
You can do it on the phone. You can do it in person. What I like to do is say, bring your journal. I want to see it. And I can look at the pages day by day. I can see if they have any new names that day. I can see how many approaches, how many invites, how many presentations, how many demos, how many new distributors, how many ADRs. I can see the whole thing. And I can sit there and go through it and look at their numbers for a month, and I can coach them pretty easy. I can say, you know what I'd be doing? If I were you, I'd be talking to a lot more people. That's pretty much the number one thing you can almost say to everybody. You need to be talking to more. Who are these people? Tell me about them. I can see on your genealogy, you've got these four people on your front line. Which one's FFBC? Who are they? What's the family group? What's the friend group? What's the business group? Who are these people? Tell me who they are. And who are these people underneath them? Look at this one, 500 in volume. Look at this one, 2,000 in volume. Okay, how's it going when you're signing people up? Do you have any problems getting people to buy the package? What are the objections you're getting? Let's talk about it. Okay, tell me how it's going. What are your fears? Where are you, where are you stumbling? If I have somebody who's approaching 100 people a month, but they're not getting any presentations, why do I know already? They got a problem with the invite. They got a problem with what they're saying to people. They can talk to that many people and nobody wants a demo, something's wrong. Okay? They can't find one person that wants to look younger. Something's wrong. Right? They're saying something, they're screwing it up. If I can see that they talk to 100 people and they've got 50 demos, but not one person signing up, or they're getting no customers, no ADRs, something's really wrong with the demo or with the presentation. And I can ask them about it. I can work on it. And if they're signing them up, but they're not getting LOIs, or they're not getting people all the way through to executive, then i got a, a real situation where I can start to coach them about how we're going to drive those lines. People don't get that part, right? They sponsor somebody go, good, got them. Now, let's see, who's the next one I'm going to go get? No. As soon as you got them, what do you do? You don't sponsor a person. You sponsor this person's whole circle of influence. You work through this person to 